Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transstar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Testing solenoids on an automatic transmission used to be a simple process. The solenoids uh, early on were simple on-off uh, type. You would merely hook uh, a 12 volt uh, battery to it and um, energize it, apply air, make sure that it would open and close. You would also test the resistance and amperage draw and uh, that was pretty much it. As time went on though, uh, when the OEMs came out with uh, PWM solenoids, which is pulse width modulation, um, a little bit more complicated. Uh, many times you needed a manifold to where this would shove in. Uh, you would still check uh, ohms resistance and uh, amperage draw, but you would also have to vary the frequency to make this operate uh, correctly. So it was not a simple on-off. It would oscillate and to test it properly, you would need to uh, change the frequency to make sure that your uh, air pressure was varying as it should. Uh, they even came out as time went on with a little bit more involved uh, type of uh, PWM and whether you call it a variable, for variable force motor, a uh, variable bleed solenoid, linear solenoid. Uh, there's a lot of different names, different varieties. Uh, some of the newer ones, however, you have different ratings on them. So they'll have a band number, you know, one, two, three, four, and five. And even though you can test them, you're not going to be able to test to the level between the, um, the numbers to know that you have the right one. So you always go with the right band number when you replace this. But again, basic testing, it's a PWM type solenoid. If that was not hard enough, the more recent issue is multiple solenoids in the same housing. So when you have uh, something like a General Motors Tecum unit, a 6T40, 6T70, 6L80 and so on, you have multiple solenoids in this one housing uh, along with the TCM or the computer. So you might imagine testing these are much harder. Uh, Kentmore, uh, many years ago, came out with a test uh, plate to enable you to test these solenoids uh, to at least know that the solenoids are working correctly. This plate, as you can see, has a lot of uh, uh, air nipples on it, a lot of holes, and what you would do is to merely bolt this down. It's uh, bolted on rigidly. You have an air line here, and you have a gauge that you can attach to each, each one of the solenoids that you want to test. There is also a harness and this harness that comes with the uh, plate connects to the uh, uh, electrical connector of the Tecum unit. The other end plugs into the uh, harness that's on the vehicle that would normally plug in to the uh, uh, Tecum unit. And then you would use uh, something like a Tec2 that would allow you to fire each individual solenoid to make sure that it's working correctly. Now, uh, there are a couple of different packages. This one happens to be for the 6T40. We're going to flash the numbers on the screen. The, uh, the other package is for a 6L80, and the harness that comes in the kit is for 6L80. The plate also works on 6T70, but you're going to have to buy a separate harness for the 6T70. And again, the part numbers will be posted in the presentation. If you bought these uh, new from the normal sources, this plate's uh, kit is fairly expensive. 
but you can check the internet. A lot of these are now appearing uh, for really competitive prices. And to deal with Tecum units uh, such as 6T40, 6T70, it's a good idea to have these to be able to test the solenoids and at least you know you're not putting a Tecum unit back on uh, with a bad solenoid or any other type of problem. I'm Mike Riley. Thanks for watching. See you next time.